a surprising admission from the director of the Department of Public Works during a fiery hearing into the water contamination in West Baltimore. That's right. Director Jason Mitchell saying the department made mistakes and needs to make changes. We did struggle the first 24 hours. And I said that earlier, and I will say that again. We struggled. We needed help. It doesn't take long, as you can imagine, but I think to your point uh, and, and to my opening remarks and my closing remarks, there was a lot of lessons learned, right? And communication was a huge lesson. Well, that contradicts what we heard from Mayor Scott. He has maintained that there was no problem with how the department handled the situation, including the communication. At one point, the mayor's office did release a statement saying that he regrets that the public wasn't informed earlier, but he clarified that is because the communication could not have happened sooner. The regret is simply about not being able to go through the process faster, Keith. Uh, as I just said to me, we want to get that information out as quickly as possible, but when you have to follow regulations, we're going to follow those regulations. And sometimes that causes us not to be able to do things that we want to do in the haste that we do. But again, I think for your viewers in particular, uh, for folks to know is that we follow every regulation. But it seems to be that it, it's a department plagued with problems, perhaps mismanaged. And I know that a lot of people we've talked to say that they want to see some sort of accountability when it comes to how this, especially this situation was handled. Communication seemed to be bungled. How do you in turn, how do you plan to make sure that the community sees that someone is held accountable for this. So again, Mackenzie, there was no misbundling of communication. Uh, you weren't here the other day, but we laid that out, uh, that we follow the protocol of how you communicate and how you have to, uh, MD has to say to DPW, yes, you can say this at this time. That was followed. We're gonna follow every rule and every regulation. And when you're talking about an issue like this, again, this wasn't something that DPW mismanaged. We reached out to the mayor's office today asking if, in the light of the director's apology today, the mayor has changed his view on how the department handled the situation. A spokesperson for the mayor did not directly answer that question in her response, saying in part, we have started to assess where matters could have been coordinated differently internally that would have allowed for more efficiency around messaging and outreach externally. You can find the full response on our Twitter page at foxbaltimore.com. Well, city council members sharply criticizing DPW for their handling of the situation today. One councilman saying he believes DPW failed to meet the requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act by not informing the public within 24 hours. DPW was in violation of the requirements to provide notification. Why we're here is because of the way that it was handled. The most critical time in a crisis is those first 24 hours. And frankly, I'm disgusted on how those first 24 hours were, was handled. I think the city failed. I, I think the entire city failed with this. Well, now Fox 45 News is taking matters into our own hands, conducting our own independent tests of the water. Fox 45's Keith Daniels is documenting the process to help residents get some peace of mind. Well, when you take a drink or use the water in your home, you want to be confident that it's safe, no contamination. But for some residents in West Baltimore, their confidence is shaken, especially for one woman. And tonight, we're doing what we can to help ease those concerns. In this Harlem Park neighborhood in West Baltimore, taking steps toward testing. Two EPA certified water samplers from two Maryland Department of Environment approved water testing laboratories. Hey, how you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? At the home of Denise Knight. Now we're moving in the right direction. Now at least maybe I can get some peace. Knight unnerved since the E. coli contamination water scare over the Labor Day weekend. Skepticism still prevalent despite the lifting of the no boil advisory announced by Mayor Brandon Scott Friday and the water cleared for use in homes. The woman in the window Tuesday not buying it. I'm not drinking the water yet. But now night is perhaps one step closer to peace of mind. Fox 45 News reached out to several MDE approved water testing labs to test night's water. Fountain Valley Analytical and Atlantic Blue Water Services who submit samples to MDE approved 
water testing labs of Maryland selected for the job. Our camera documents their sample gathering. We've got something called uh, thiosulfate in here that counteracts the chlorine. We want to make sure everything's sterile before we put it in the bottle so that you know we don't get any contamination from here. I'm all finished. Earlier this week, Knight told us there is one thing that could possibly convince her that her drinking water is safe. I would like for the mayor to drink this water. And if he like, he can come over and have a glass of water with me. We took Knight's to challenge to the mayor, invited him to drink the water in the affected area to show residents it's safe. The mayor's office responded, his director of communications, Monica Lewis, saying in part, Mayor Scott will not engage in any stunts or theatrics. Still, Knight says, Not knowing. Uh, that's that's a scary thing. Since the contamination emergency, she's been drinking bottled water, despite what the mayor says. I hope he was right. I'm hoping I'm wrong, you know, but, you know, this test will tell. Well, the water samples are now at the lab. We're waiting for the results. We'll keep you posted. Reporting tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. That brings us to our question of the day. Who would you trust to fix the Department of Public Works? Mayor Brandon Scott, City Council, both or neither? So far, 96% of those who have voted say neither. You can go to foxbaltimore.com vote to weigh in.